pre-up, my beef ribs are delicious. And to get things started, I've got this lovely bacon that we're going to throw in here. But a lot of people, when they get the bacon in a nice big slab like this, they take the rind and they throw it away. Do not throw the bacon rind away. Pop it into the pot because okay. that's going to render down and give it great flavour. And in goes that bacon. Listen to that sizzle. Beautiful. Oh. And to add even more flavour, we've got these lovely beef ribs here. Look at these suckers. The nice big rib beef down here, this bone, and we've got the intercostal here. Now, this is a great piece of meat. It does a lot of work uh, with the animal, moving it around and breathing. Okay. So it does take a while to cook, which is the perfect cut to use for a dish like this. We're going to slow braise it with lots of wine and, and get it going. Plenty of salt all over it, and I've got some tongs there. Turn it around and season every single side of it. Really, really important. Now, while this is sizzling around here, oh, the smell of Bacon. It does smell glorious, and I have to say this isn't coming naturally to me, to, like, salt meat. I'm trying to become richo and embody him. You have to. That's why meat always tastes good in a restaurant, because chefs salt their meat a lot. We yes. put lots and lots of salt on everything we cook so that it brings out the flavour. And onions chopped up nice and coarse like this. Now, when you're braising, mm. you want to chop your vegetables nice and big because they're going to cook for a long time. Yes. Now, the carrot I sort of cut on these big sort of angles. See, I'll turn the carrot around. Yes. And I get these big, long chunky sort of... Chunky carrot. Chunky carrot yes. shapes. Nice. Which is what we're looking for. That's it. Salt on more? the top. Do you want more than that? Salt on the top, salt on the back, lots of salt all over the place. Throw it all over the shoulder. You well, love that, don't you? I'm trying to embody you, so I'm Here just... It's a weird feeling becoming rich over oh, me can, can you imagine that? <laughs> I'm feeling a little bit ill just thinking about it. Now, I'm going to turn my, pot, my pots right up nice and high. There we go. They're cranking away now. In goes the garlic, in goes Beautiful. the carrot. And the bay leaf goes in there as well. And I'll just stir that around a little bit. That's sweating off beautifully. OK, Priya, I've got a pan that's really hot. Oh, my goodness. It's like you've given me a birthday it's present. It's your gift, Richo. Thank you. Seasoned meat. Exactly. So this is sizzling away nicely. What you want to say, lots of caramelisation happening in the yes. pan here. And I'm going to pop the beef ribs straight down here in the pan. Now, depending on the heat that you've got in your pan, you might want to do a couple at a time, but I know this is going to be really, really hot, so I pop them in straight away. And this is a great way of doing it so that you don't splash yourself with any hot oil. So I pop the ribs in there first, hand the plate over to you, and then I'll pour in some oil. Now, that will heat up really, really quickly and we'll nice. get a lot of sizzle action going on. Thyme and rosemary, bring yes. it over. Bring it over, baby. Okay, so we're just going to throw this in. I just tear it and mm. throw it in. Beautiful. Lots of Use lots it like of you herbs. stole it, Richard. Exactly. Beautiful. I think I did steal that somewhere before. Now, I've got it in the hot pan. You'll be able to see that already we're starting to get some browning off action going. Yes. So this takes another minute or so of browning it off, and then we'll turn it all over, and then we'll be able to bring this together. OK, Priya, the meat is browned off beautifully. Beautiful. And now we just pop it straight on top here like this. It smells fantastic, doesn't it? It does, actually. So I have to say, I often don't do this part, but now that you've told me it's all about the flavour and locking it in, sealing exactly. it in, important step. That's what it's all about. And I'll just grab this port yes. here. And then this is what we call oh, deglazing yes. the pan. So all the stuff that's on the bottom of that pan, Yum. we want to keep. So we just stir it around like that. And then pour it straight over the top there. Beautiful. Is Smells this going great. in too? That port red wine in there, and that gives it some sweetness. Nice. And to give it a little bit more sweetness, I've got some quince paste. I just spoon some of that on top there, and that'll mix all the way through. In goes the stock. I want you to pour it in so it just sort of snuggles up against okay. the uh, the ribs and it's just like a little bath. Exactly. Got so it. it sort of covers them up a little bit. That's what we're looking for. Keep going. Keep, Keep going. going. Okay. I reckon you might be able to get all of that in okay. there. Okay. That's perfect. Perfect. Okay. Now, to make a really nice seal on the top of it and Ooh. seal in all the juices, I like to put some butter on top because as the butter melts, it actually forms a protective layer on go. top of this dish and keeps in all those lovely flavours. Really, okay. really important. A little butter on top there makes everything delicious. Then, of course, we grab the lid, pop that on top and then over to the oven. Preset at 165 degrees Celsius. It'll take about an hour and a half to two hours. You'll know it's cooked because the meat will be nice and oh, tender. Fall enough. In it goes. Smells fantastic, doesn't it? It does. Oh, a little bit of parsley on it. 
It's amazing the difference a little bit of fresh herb, just like parsley, does to the finishing off a dish. Oh, look at that beautiful Wow, rib. it's falling off. Very tender. Oh, that's what you want. Yeah. You want it to fall apart. I mean, as I said before, these mussels do a lot of work, so you want to make sure that it just falls off the bone and that's what makes it even more delicious. The cooking juices go in there as well. Mm. Nice piece of beef, and as you like to say, you want to see lots of veggies on there. Yes, so I do. I'm just going to put one carrot on top there for Beautiful. you. Beautiful. You like that? I'll go for that one. Yeah, you can. You can have that. Uh, before you okay, start, sorry, sorry. take it easy. We've got to. We can't rush these things. I've spent a lot of time cooking this. I've got the mum one uh, pot one. Yeah, exactly. Get this puppy done. And, and, and you want to make sure you do it properly. So I make sure I've got some butter on here, and I just smear that butter I over the top of that. I'd love to take your cholesterol. Oh, I'd love to go. just see what's going on in there. I think we're going to get it off the scales this one, so I'll just cut that in half. Half Beautiful. for you, half for me. You want some butter? I'd like to have the carrot. I'm happy, thank okay, you. Right, no love worries. a bit of bread, but I'm looking at that Sprinkle knobbly carrot. Sprinkle some lovely parsley on top. More more greens in my uh, my vocabulary, or what do you want to call diet. it? Yeah, diet. Diet. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, it's a funny word, that one. Now, you can see it comes apart. That's what we're looking for. That lovely, beautiful, juicy meat coming apart. Mm. A little bit of the sauce here as well. Mm. That is really, really lovely, Richard. I love veggies and meat all in one pot. And I love that you've used the two wines in there, Richard. Two is better than one, and that's why I win. <laughs>